Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I would also like to thank uh, the presenters for uh, doing excellent jobs. Uh, I have a couple of questions for uh, each of the presenters. Uh, the first presenter who talked uh, about uh, decomposition, uh, I would like to know what she has in mind on how age is supposed to be measured, the age. Uh, is it because we know that age could be subjective, uh, your health status could be subjective, uh, it could be time dependent, uh, the way you feel today may depend on the way you felt yesterday, uh, it could be path dependent, uh, do we, are we thinking about measuring it as a composite index? Uh, in, and if that is the case, what will constitute that index? For children it may be easier because you have uh, these measures of uh, whether, the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, measured of a child's well-being in terms of health, uh, but for adults, how do you intend to, uh, to measure that? Uh, and I was also thinking, uh, due to endogeneity, why didn't you include rather the lag of the explanatory variables in measuring the health status? Because whatever my socioeconomic status was yesterday or year, the years past could influence my health today. And uh, the third question is that, I'm wondering why you use OLS. Is it because you assume that the age is not normally distributed? What about if we have other types of distribution? Uh, that, will that influence the results that you have? And I was also wondering whether the past, why past health status was not included as one of the explanatory variables of health? Because my health today will depend on what my health <clears throat> in the previous period. So this is my question for the first presenter. Uh, for the first, second presenter, uh, Christoph, uh, uh, I would like to know whether if we look at ordinal utility functions, whether the, the fourth order derivative is consistent with any of the basic uh, ordinal utility functions that we have, or you are proposing a different form of uh, utility function which will obey the fourth order derivative that uh, you, you propose. And then uh, to the third presenter, uh, well, my, my question here is, uh, usually a, a model like this is very elegant, uh, but when you think about the developing country context, uh, so much goes on between collection of the taxes and disburs disbursement of those taxes. For example, uh, in recent times, uh, the, the government of Nigeria wanted to uh, remove subsidies on gasoline, and we saw what happened. It's all because they don't trust the government that the monies that are collected is going to be used for what it's intended for. So collecting the taxes could be a problem because there is a lot of leakages, like value-added taxes, all kinds of taxes that are collected in developing countries, much of it gets appropriated by those who are supposed to collect them. And disbursing them is also problematic because most people uh, don't use the taxes for what they are intended for. So I see that your model is based on the assumption that uh, when you design a tax structure, the monies are collected and the monies are used for what they are intended. But this does not actually reflect realities uh, in developing countries in general. I'm talking about uh, the case of sub-Saharan Africans, in, uh, African countries in particular. So uh, will you try to incorporate that? Or maybe you have to state that as some limitation of, uh, of your modeling. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Any other question at this stage? Thank you. Um, on the th thank you for the presentation. Uh, this uh, just a reminder of those things that we did some time ago. Uh, on the last presenter, uh, um, you talked about the use of. Um, uh, my concern is in in the part of um, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. You seem to be seeing a progressive tax system. And so to look at a, a, a unified income tax may not be um, applicable in the context because it's graduated based on your income. And so that is my concern in terms of the application of uh, such a uniform tax system in, in, in the model. And then on the second one, I think, uh, uh, Christopher, yes, I'm wondering the 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 real practical meaning of the third, fourth derivative um, in terms of, by the time you get there, the, the effect has been complicated. So the first derivative is easier. Okay, assuming everything is uh, probably held constant and this one alone is changing. Then the second one, and then the third, fourth. Probably, I don't know whether time didn't allow it to get there. But the real interpretation of the fourth 
um, derivative by the time you get there, it becomes complex. But I don't know how you've looked at it. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll go to the answers first and then we'll take one round because we are really running out of time. Okay, please. Uh, thank you, sir, for your interesting series of questions. Um, first of all, I would, li would like to start with the fact that every analysis is subject to some set of assumptions. And also, for my part, I had uh, this set of assumptions. First of all, with respect to the health variable, uh, we chose a, a, for a non-negative ratio scaled variable to which we can apply OLS. Uh, we had these boundaries of zero and one, so our um, health variable, uh, stunting, was defined on the, the unit interval scale. And it's indeed true that you can uh, apply some uh, more sophisticated analysis like a sensor to Tobit uh, model to that, but we, we kept it rough. And, it, and, and it's okay then in that case to uh, apply to LS to a regression model in which not one of the dependent variables is also used as an independent variable. So, um, so it's true you can do better. Um, and there are papers also out there which consider binary health variables. That's um, most often also done, um, to which then uh, some kind of probit analysis um, has been adopted. So binary health variables are also used, but we chose for in our ana analysis for a non-negative ratio scaled variable to which we can just apply OLS and then compare to uh, GMM analysis using a structural equation model. And now, um, so uh, the analysis is just uh, shed some light on a basic framework which you can uh, extend. Um, the data that we took uh, only considered um, uh, one wave in, in the demographic and health survey uh, of Ethiopia. It was a 2011 um, wave, um, so the latest series um, um, of the data. Um, so the data are cross-sectional, and in our regression, um, a more comprehensive analysis would indeed include uh, some time series uh, lagged variables and, and to extend the data to some panel data, longitudinal data, besides having a cross-sectional component to also have a time series component. So, but we just kept it basic because um, it was not really uh, the point to um, extend in that way, but more to uh, say that uh, what to do if you want to include one of your uh, dependent variables in your bivariate uh, measure as um, an independent variable as well, then you need to assume it as being endogenous, and then you need to assume a structural equation modeling framework. But I leave it up to you and the audience to extend to this framework in a much more broader application field. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, first question on, on the uh, ordinal utility. Yeah, yes, this is uh, very well uh, pointed out. Um, the, the utilities in this kind of literature are cardinal. Uh, this is originated by the, 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 the problem uh, um, <coughs> raised by Arrow a long time ago, which is uh, it's not possible to aggregate preferences uh, uh, with a set of reasonable axioms in general on the solution uh, was provided by uh, D'Apremont on, on Gevers on, on, on letter Seine, which was to introduce some comparability between utilities. So all the results of um, stochastic dominance in, in, in uh, welfare analysis, inequality analysis, poverty analysis that I know uh, uh, are based on some uh, cardinality assumption. There is a little bit more which could be done, and uh, I should write a note on that. Um, uh, it's not possible to, to get the robustness of the result when you transform the utility function by any increasing function. But if you limit the class of increasing function to certain categories, uh, there is some extension of the result, but that, that's why. 
at the moment, in economics, we can uh, do work with comparabilities and cardinal activities, and uh, without it, we, we have very, very, very few results. So, um, within this framework, uh, about the fourth derivative, uh, that, that's the point of introducing this new notion of welfare shock sharing. There, is, there are more things that I could do with welfare shock sharing in this paper. I restrict the analysis to uh, settings uh, which are typical, which is uh, people have uh, expected utilities, uh, and, and, and you look at uh, a sum of utilities or, or, or linear conditions such as uh, utilitarian uh, social welfare. Uh, once you have understood that sharing shocks uh, sh allows you to uh, uh, give some meaning to some uh, uh, normative assumption, and that you can translate this normative assumption in two derivatives, then you can uh, obtain, uh, you can clamp up to the fourth derivative. I could go even further. The, the, the first derivative is just the monotonicity, so that's okay. The second derivative, even when you look at correlation aversion, correlation aversion is equivalent to sharing fixed losses is good, is good, etc. The third uh, derivative, I've commented it. The fourth der derivative, if you look at the fourth derivative, the symmetric one, when you derive twice with respect to the first argument and twice to with respect to the second argument, this is equivalent to say that the social planner considered that sharing random shocks, center random shocks, to avoid uh, mixing a problem with, with fixed losses, uh, sh sharing shocks is better than uh, having the same person bearing the, all the shocks. So that is the meaning of the fourth uh, uh, utilities. Uh, uh, there are meanings involving the sharing of shocks. Some of these shocks are random shocks. Uh, the meaning of, of um, uh, on, on some of these shows may affect different attributes. Okay? Thank you. Um, so, um, regarding the concern about tax collection and tax uh, leakage, uh, that's a, of course a very relevant uh, concern and, um, and, and in my <clears throat> Sorry, in the, um, when I talk about the potential applications that when I talk about poor administrative capacity or corruption, this is exactly the phenomenon that I refer to, that um, part of the tax collected could disappear or be diverted to other uses. Um, and this can, of course, be, be put into the model as an assumption as well, uh, make some assumptions on, on what, what share um, disappears, but also it, it should be noted that uh, if, it's, if this is the only effect, then it won't have the only effect it will have is that we have less money to use, for example, for the public goods and the, the income transfers, but it won't affect on like on the uh, how we impact on poverty. So the, the the impact will be greatest on the poorest, and that will show up in the in the tax rules. But we will just have a little bit uh, less money to use on those benefits, um, unless of course the thing becomes a bit more complicated if you have these cyclicalities that people don't want to pay taxes because they want, and then it depends on who pays taxes and, and not, and this, this will then get more complicated. And then on the implementation of tax, if I understood the question correctly, is that it can be a bit difficult to implement, implement these taxes, so our idea is that uh, this would be um, the sim a kind of the simplest possible way, but to still have a comprehensive tax system where you have um, uh, the linear income tax is in that sense easy to implement that you can, for example, uh, each employer can withhold the tax uh, at source at when, when they pay the tax and they don't have to worry about the total income of e tracking the total income of each individual which you need for progressive taxes. So the idea is that th this would be uh, feasible in that sense. So, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, we'll take one last question. Is it okay? Okay. So, thank you all for attending this session, and uh, a big congratulations to the three presentation. And see you for the for the other sessions. Thank you.